Um, yo guys, what is up? It is Master Darius here, and today I'm bringing you guys here some Halo 4 gameplay in the background. This is some abandoned gameplay on Team Infinity Slayer. I do pretty well, find scores 23, like 3 or something. Something like that. Um, so, anyway, let's talk about another Halo Top 10 today. And have you guys ever wondered what would be the most annoying things in Halo's history? Well, today you're gonna find out a very accurate list. So, today we're gonna be covering the top 10 most annoying things in Halo's history. So, let's get started. I mean, we got 200 mentions here to give out, and then we'll talk about some 10 disgusting things. Some of them have already been removed in the past installments, but I hope. I hope, um, some of them, which still do exist, get removed in Halo 5 at least. So, anyway, let's talk about it. So, um,. Honorable mentions, one of them is Aim Assist, aka Auto Aim. Now, Auto Aim has been really annoying, I mean, especially in 4, for example. Like, you have the noobs, the noobs that are not so, um, not so good as the players, they're not, at, le at least, um, they don't have as much knowledge as the, um, better players do, so, and sometimes they still manage to, um, kill somebody if they use the DMR because of the um, amount of auto aim that the DMR has in Halo 4 and it's very easy to use the DMR it's very easy to aim with it um, me for example I hate this thing mainly because I can't even use auto aim um, for example in Halo Reach and Halo 3 I have a better aim than I do in Halo 4 and Halo 3 and Halo Reach has less auto aim I think my hands or my instincts just reject auto aim. It does not like it at all. So I'm not a big fan of auto aim. And then the other honor mention is ordnance, which is a system implemented in Halo Force Infinity Slayer playlists um, or game types, as you can say. Um, the ordnance system was quite balanced at first at the, st uh, at, um, the start of Halo Four. Infinity was the more um, more popular playlist. Um, so basically. Um, Ordnance systems was a little bit too casual. Basically, um, it's it's full of random randomness. That's the only problem. You could get like a, you could for example get a needler out of your ordnance, and somebody else, if they're lucky, could get a few rod. And it's quite some imbalancement there. That's why it can be quite frustrating sometimes. So then moving on now to the top ten itself. At number ten, this is actually not so bad, but a lot, quite a lot of people, like 50 50, 50 percent of the community have a problem with this. So. It is Sprint. Now, Sprint, in my opinion, is not that bad. It has a lot of positives and negatives as well, but um, for me, a big positive about Sprint is that it speeds up the gameplay, which is I, what I really like. I really like fast, fast gameplay. And the negative is, which is what the, my problem with it is, and a lot of people's problem with it is, if an pl enemy player makes a mistake, and they put themselves in, like, a trap, and... You easily put balls in them, you easily win the one in one battle. But somehow, because of sprints, they get away of that bad situation and everything is forgiven. Whereas they should be punished for making that mistake and should die rather than have the ability to escape, which is the problem with sprint. So, anyway, at number 9 we have the plasma grenades. Uh, been quite a pain in the ass in Halo Reach and 4. Now, I don't know if it's due with a little bit of auto aim or not, but it's very common that, um, I mean, especially because of loadouts in Halo 4, people are using spamming the plasma nades, especially the noobs out there. They throw lots of plasma nades and sometimes they stick you because of the auto aim. But the most annoying thing of all is, if you kill them, they somehow, their corpse drops a plasma nade and sticks to you. I find it happens very often to me, at least. That's how unlucky I can be sometimes in Halo. It's quite annoying. And number eight, we have Bloom, which existed only in Halo Reach. It has been resolved in Halo 4, um, luckily. Which the Bloom only existed within the DMR. Basically, if the DMR had a whole bunch of recoil, and some shots just wouldn't register at all, even even if you would like aim perfectly at their head. This was later patched when Free for Free took over um, Halo, which was a good thing actually. So. I definitely played most. I I all I usually place to um. I think it later got Bloom got removed from every single playlist in four, which had DMR, which is a good thing. So number seven we have vehicle camping. Now what I mean of vehicle camping is, for example, this was prominent, actually near. An, it could happen in every single Halo, especially. It only could only work in BTB maps. 
and the map which is famous for this is Ragnarok aka Valhalla. Now, um, it happened both in Halo 3 and 4 where people would use vehicles and capture the flag to camp on their bases to protect the flags and people come they would gun you down immediately unless you would find a clever route. Um, in Halo 4 the Mantis, who are some idiots who would have a Mantis would just camp in the base of a Mantis shoot some people down. Now this is rare but it does happen sometimes and can be really frustrating. Number 6 we have Flinch, a ability which was available in Halo 4 and I'm pretty sure that Flinch is confirmed to be not be existing in Halo 5. I'm pretty sure it will be removed from Halo 5 since they're gonna be making it more like Halo 2. Now Flinch it was it was crap. I mean it was actually okay at first. Um, basically Flinch if you shoot somebody with a scoped in weapon or a sniper rifle they would flinch and it can be that's itself is quite annoying. People would prefer to actually get descoped rather than flinch so they can aim it again and try and fire again. And I think the end game descope is a lot more balanced than um how in flinch because there's a there's a perk in a loadout system that can decrease the effect of a flinch. That perk is called stability and it's very annoying because basically if you use, use a lot of snipers out there, a lot of players now use stability. It's a very popular perk. I don't use it because I because I have other necessity perks. Um but people who do use the um the stability perk they have their flinch outcome is reduced. So if you shoot them while they have a sniper rifle, they have, they have barely any flinches. They can just kill you easily. It's like very easy to use a sniper rifle or a battle rifle for them. They're like super aim, as you can say, and uh, very easy for them to kill targeted enemies. And that is very unbalanced. And that's very annoying for me, especially when you shoot snipers. They're supposed to be flinch, but they can they just fire back immediately and kill you. No, no problem for them at all. Descoping is definitely a better thing as it requires more skill to use than the sniper rifles and stuff like that in long range battle. So I really hate flinch, I'm sure it'll go in Halo 5 anyway. But anyway, at number 5 we had jetpack. Now jetpack is an armor ability existing in Halo Reach, it started in Halo Reach, was very annoying, everybody hated it pretty much, um, majority hated it at least. Jetpack now, jetpack wasn't OP at all, basically a skill player could easily gun down a person who's using jetpack easily easily but the only problem with jetpack is it destroyed a little bit of the core gameplay now what it added is now if it was really annoying because you you had to aim now if a person of jetpack was coming right above you in the skies you had to focus on him but you also had to focus on the ground units so it just made things more harder and more frustrating if somebody was using jetpack so number four, we have spawn trappers, which existed in every single Halo. Now spawn trapping, um, I'm not sure if it existed in exactly every single Halo, but I'm pretty sure it existed in Halo 3, Reach and 4. Now, for example, Valhalla and Ragnarok, they're perfect examples of this. If you, for example, get two mantises on Halo 4, you secure, you use one mantis to secure the base of the enemy. Then your teammate steals a mantis, which is just spawn team, and you. Then they both use the mantis to just basically spawn trap and fuck everybody up who's um on that team, and it gets really annoying, and it's an automatic rage quit for the other team, um, and it just ruins the entire match basically. On number three, we have camo campers, very popular in Halo 4, I would say. It only existed at the start of Halo 4 where you have camo campers, especially in Ragnarok. I hate that map Ragnarok. Just just has so much unbalanced things within the map, that map, honestly. It uh, just supports many of these crap stuff. So camo camo campers, um This is the last thing on this list to do with Ragnarok to say the least, but you have you have a lot of campers, for example with snipers, they go on the hills in um Ragnarok or the back of the maps and um, they just sit there in the corner of the camos they just shoot anybody who's in front of them that's basically what it is camo camping you can't really see them from a distance and it can get really frustrating but no nobody uses it anymore so that's good okay and number two now this is a very obvious one everybody absolutely everybody hates this every single person um, it is lag switching now lag switching is very prominent in Call of Duty and Halo 
lag switching will be resolved, luckily, due to dedicated servers on the Xbox One for Halo. Um, so thank God for that, lag switching is going to be gone forever, and we'll never see this ever again. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that um, camera campers and jetpacks will also be gone from Halo 5 since there won't be any armor abilities and loadouts, so yeah, that's gone at least. Um, so lag switching, people, some butthurt idiots who would be losing, for example, would use it so they can make a comeback, or people, people um, who are winning would use it to uh, just destroy the enemy team and secure the victory. So basically all these morons to take video games where he seriously would use it. And it's technically a crime actually. It is definitely illegal to manipulate um, uh, networks and you can get banned for it. I always report people who do lag switch. Um, but I never see them get banned for some reason. But they definitely deserve to get banned. Um, and then number one, this is from Halo Reach. It never came back in Halo 4, which is awesome. And I'm definitely sure it won't come back in Halo 5. Because this thing here is the most hateful element of Halo that ever existed. It is Armor Lock. It is a armor ability that exists in Halo Reach. When Free Free took over, they removed Armor Lock from a, a whole bunch of playlists they created. And that is excellent because I never touched any of the playlists of Armor Lock ever again after they released a new playlist without Armor Lock and Jetpack. Um, it's just a crap piece of shit, Armor Lock, honestly. It just destroyed many core elements. Um, armor Lock, you would lock down and peel things are invincible. The teammates would come and clean you up sometimes. While they're in armor lock, you can't kill them. Or, the most annoying thing at all, destroys melee attacks and sword attacks. If you use a sword and you charge somebody with armor lock, you launch at them, they go in armor lock, you hit the person who's in armor lock, it does not kill them. You use your shield, then they get out of armor lock and melee you and kill you. It happened many times in Reach. was the most annoying, without doubt, the most annoying element of Halo to date. And thank goodness this thing was gone. As, um, was gone after some months, well at least after a year unfortunately, but uh, yeah, this thing is just crap honestly, <sighs> just, it's just disgusting armor lock, and good thing it never comes back, and some people actually enjoyed it, I mean, I can't imagine anybody enjoying this, it just ruins gameplay really, by the way, hope you guys enjoyed this video, this has been the most annoying crap things in Halo's history, and I shall see you guys in the Norhale Top 10 soon.